Praise be Jesus and Mary. St. Catherine of Alexandria, who we remember today, is the patroness of philosophers and preachers. Hers was the, uh, one of the voices that uh, was heard by St. Joan of Arc. She was born in the fourth century of uh, nobility and uh, before her baptism she had a dream and uh, she saw the, the Blessed Virgin asking uh, her son to receive her among um, his servants. But the uh, divine infant turned away saying she was not yet regenerated by the waters of baptism. So uh, she didn't waste any time in receiving that sacrament. And afterwards, uh, when the dream was repeated, uh, Catherine was received with great affection. And our Lord espoused her before the, uh, the court of heaven with a, uh, with a very uh, fine ring. And when she woke up, uh, the ring was, ring was actually on her finger. Um, and she was uh, quite gifted uh, intellectually and even uh, undertook the study of philosophy and theology. Uh, and that at that time, there were uh, schools in Alexandria where uh, excellent uh, Christian scholars uh, taught. She made uh, great progress and uh, became able to defend the, the truths of the faith, even uh, against the cunning uh, sophists. And um, at that time, uh, Maximinus was uh, emperor of Egypt and he ordinarily resided in Alexandria. And when he uh, announced that there would be this huge pagan sacrifice, with uh, many bulls and, and sheeps, uh, sheep uh, being offered to their false gods, uh, St. Catherine uh, strove to strengthen the Christians against uh, the fatal errors of the infidels and proclaiming that uh, you know, they were pure illusions uh, originating from the depths of hell. She uh, foresaw that uh, Soon, it would be the Christians' turn to be immolated, you know, when they refused to participate in the, the ceremonies. Therefore, uh, to prevent this, she went to the emperor herself and said that it was a, a strange thing, you know, that he should, by his example, attract uh, so many people to such an abominable cult and that uh, by his high office, he was uh, obliged to turn them away from it. Since reason itself shows us that uh, there can only be one sovereign being. And she begged him to uh, cease so great a tragedy by giving the true God the, the honor due to him lest he reap the wages of his indifference in this life already, as well as in the next. And the emperor decided to call uh, 50 of his sophists to bring back uh, Catherine from her errors. And uh, a large audience assembled in the emperor, uh, with the, uh, the emperor, you know, to hear the debate. St. Catherine began by saying to the emperor that if the true God she adored uh, rendered her victorious, that he should adopt her religion and renounce the, the cult of the demons. But uh, he was kind of put off by this and, and replied that it wasn't for her to lay down conditions uh, for the discussion. And uh, the head of the sophists began by uh, 
you know, reprimanding Catherine for opposing the authority of the poets and, and should consider that, uh, you know, these persons uh, predated this new religion that she was following. And she listened carefully, you know, before answering and then spoke, uh, showing that the fables which uh, Homer and the poets had invented, you know, concerning their divinities were ridiculous. Uh, the fact that uh, many offered a cult to them as well as the uh, abominable crimes attributed to them, you know, proved them to be gods only in the opinion of the uh, untutored and the gullible. Then she went on to prove that the, uh, the prophecies of the Hebrew scriptures and, you know, had clearly uh, announced the time and the circumstances of the life of the future Savior and that these were now fulfilled. So Prodigy, the head of the Sophist, acknowledged that, uh, you know, she was entirely correct and renounced his errors. And uh, the others said, well, they could not oppose their, their mentor. So uh, Maximinus, the, the emperor, had them all put to death by fire. But the fire did not consume their remains. And, uh, you know, just proving that uh, they died as Christians, you know, receiving the, the baptism of blood. And uh, since the emperor couldn't outwit uh, St. Catherine, he offered her a royal marriage if she would deny the faith, and her refuser, refusal landed her in prison. And while the emperor was away, she converted his wife and his uh, captain of the guards and uh, 200 of his soldiers. And upon his return, he had all of them put to death and delivered Catherine back to prison and then to tortures. Um, you know, the famous will of St. Catherine. In reality, uh, several uh, interacting wills, which uh, he invented to torture, uh, they were furnished with, uh, you know, razor sharp blades and uh, sharp points of iron. Um, it said that all who saw this device trembled, um, but as soon as it was set in motion, it was uh, miraculously shattered to pieces, which uh, flew in all directions and wounded the spectators. Uh, the emperor finally commanded that uh, she be beheaded. And after uh, praying that her mortal remains would be respected, she offered her neck to the executioner. And, you know, the story of... Uh, St. Catherine continues with the discovery of the intact body of a young and, and beautiful girl on Mount Sinai in the ninth century. That's uh, four centuries later. Uh, the church in the opening prayer of the old mass for her feast day uh, bears witness to the, uh, the transport of her body The prayer was, uh, O God, you who gave the law to Moses on Mount Sinai and later had the body of the Blessed Virgin Catherine miraculously carried to the same spot by your holy angels, grant through her merits and prayers, or through the merits of, and the prayers of this saint, that we may reach the mountain, which is Christ. So let us... Uh, Keep in mind that, uh, you know, fidelity, that the fidelity displayed, uh, you know, by the saints in their uh, martyrdom, you know, cannot be uh, isolated, you know, from their previous lives, but it's, it's logical conclusion, you know. So if we uh, wish to imitate their perseverance, uh, you know, let us first imitate their fidelity to grace. And uh, the emperor uh, Maximinus's uh, blind fury, you know, against 
St. Catherine is, is symbolic of the anger of the world, you know, in the face of truth and justice. So when, uh, when we live a life of truth and justice, you know, we can expect the forces of evil to oppose us. And if you have any doubts, just ask any pro-lifer who's ever prayed in front of a, an abortuary. Um, you know, our perseverance and truth and good, however, you know, uh, will be everlasting you know, for those who remain faithful.